In a democracy, to what extent can an indirectly elected house obstruct the decisions of a directly elected house? The directly elected house has a popular mandate. A directly elected house represents the will of people. Now I can quite understand as a check and balance on the powers of an indirectly elected house, an indirectly elected house can confer its wisdom once or twice. But if we see the character of India's politics because the upper house is a council of states, you have a given number of states because uh, the composition of the house changes uh, and evolves slowly but doesn't exactly keep pace with the political complexion of the lower house, at least in the last 20 years it hasn't. Now I think time has come for this question to be answered. When I raised this question in a blog, the Congress party filed a breach of privilege notice against me that I had insulted the upper house in India. That notice is still pending. And I think uh, for years to come, when governments at center will rule and the council of states will comprise of uh, representatives of state governments, many a governments would be faced with this situation. And therefore time has come for us to find out uh, the constitutional or the or at least uh, as a matter of precedent a conventional answer to this problem otherwise a large number of steps which are extremely important would get struck one answer lies in a question that if this stalemate or traffic jam remains a lot of ordinary legislations would then have to be framed as money bills. Because uh, societies which are alive will have to find answers as to how to grow. You can't have individual ambitions trying to obstruct a popular mandate.